Received a bus lane fine and wondering if there's a way out of paying? Today, we'll try and find out why you might have received one, how they work, and a few good excuses to get out of paying. Intended to keep the roads clear for public transport, bus lane fines are usually issued for councils for entering or parking in a bus lane at restricted times. A few busier areas may have 24-hour restrictions, but the majority of bus lanes are open to any vehicle at off-peak times, then restricted again at peak times. Some councils allow motorbikes and taxis to use the lanes at all times. This can add additional confusion where drivers see a taxi and wrongly think that they can also enter the bus lane and follow. Always carefully read the signage for bus lanes and if in doubt, keep out. If you get caught entering a bus lane at the wrong time, then the local council will likely issue you with a penalty charge notice. These council penalty charge notices are official fines, which means there's a strict process to follow. Ignore a council penalty charge notice, then after 28 days, the council will send out a formal notice called a charge certificate. This notice won't just inform you of the missed payment deadline. The charge certificate will also increase your fine by 50%. You only get 14 days to pay this or a court order will be issued. The court may issue a county court judgment or a court decree if you're in Scotland. I've researched these and they're both really serious. They'll impact your credit report, possibly making credit and mortgages harder to obtain in the future. If you then ignore the CCJ or court decree, you'll very quickly hear the sound of a bailiff coming to knock on your door. In short, when it comes to penalty charge notices from the council, either pay up or appeal promptly. Never ignore one. The cost of a penalty charge notice for using a bus lane varies from one area to the next. For instance, a bus lane PCN in London may cost more than £100, whereas the average cost elsewhere is somewhere around £60. It's also important to remember that if you pay a council PCN within 14 days of receiving the fine, you'll be able to get a 50% reduction in the fee. So if you don't have a good reason to appeal, you might want to pay sooner. So how do you actually appeal a council PCN? Well, if you were pulled over by the police, then you'll have been given the PCN in person. However, most bus lane penalties are sent out as a letter in the post. How you receive the PCN will determine how you should respond. If you received it in person, then you need to make an informal appeal to the council first. Normally this involves writing a letter that details why you think the PCN was wrongly issued. If the informal appeal is rejected, you can escalate your appeal to a formal appeal or representation as they're sometimes called. You might want to gather even more evidence for a formal appeal. If you received your PCN as a letter through the door, then you won't be able to write an informal appeal and you'll have to skip straight to the formal appeal process. To actually make your appeal, you'll need the PCN number from your ticket or letter. With this, you should be able to access the appeals section of the relevant council's website and submit your information on there. Without a doubt, the hardest part of all this is writing the letter itself. You'll need to gather up the evidence that you think is in your favor and lay it out clearly for the council to judge. This is where you may prefer to seek the advice of a solicitor. This could cost far less than you might imagine. With services like Just Answer offering a trial for only five pounds, I'll leave my link to that down in the description. So what are some good reasons to appeal a bus lane ticket? Firstly, councils are obligated to make their bus lane rules and road markings clear. Bus lanes should always have blue signs to indicate that they are open for use. Typically, the sign will indicate the time period and the days of week during which the restriction applies. If there are no timings displayed on the sign, then it means that the lane is in use 24 hours a day for buses only. If these signs were absent or obstructed, then that could give you good grounds for an appeal. But instead of just simply stating that you believe the signage was unclear, you could greatly strengthen your appeal by returning to the scene of the crime and snapping a few photos as evidence. Just don't drive in the bus lane a second time. Another reason to appeal might be that you'd broken down in the bus lane and needed to wait for a recovery service. In this case, try to get some sort of mechanics invoice or a witness statement from them to support your appeal. In a similar vein, if pretty much any genuine emergency forced you to stop in the bus lane, then so long as you can prove it, you could have good grounds for an appeal. If the regular lane is blocked or obstructed, then entering a bus lane should be permissible. Just avoiding queuing traffic on your way home from work, that won't count, but a broken down vehicle or road works, that could well count. Additionally, a police officer may have instructed you to enter the bus lane if they're busy dealing with an accident, say. You'll need to have returned to the normal traffic lane as soon as possible after the obstruction. If you carried on for miles and miles in the bus lane, then, don't expect this excuse to count. Making room for an emergency vehicle should be a valid reason for entering a bus lane. You'll need to have done so safely and return to the original lane 
promptly, but this should be a good reason for appealing a bus lane PCN. If you needed to enter a bus lane in order to take evasive action and prevent an accident, then so long as you can prove it, you'll have good grounds for an appeal. You could ask the council to check their bus lane CCTV, or if you have it available, you could provide dashcam footage of the incident. In some areas, providing there are no double yellow lines or other restrictions, you may be permitted to enter a bus lane to pick up or set down a passenger. You'll need to have only entered the bus lane briefly and exited promptly, but providing you did so, you should have good grounds for not paying. You're not allowed to edit or change your appeal after submission. Therefore, it's important to take the time beforehand to prepare your appeal and include everything you need for it to be successful. If you're finding it hard to know what to say or what evidence you should include, then a popular option is to consult a solicitor for help. They should be able to help you make your appeal pretty airtight. There's many online solicitors that work out cheaper and easier than meeting in person. Just Answer, for example, only costs five pounds for a trial, and I know a guy who saved over 270 pounds on a parking ticket by using their service. I've linked that offer in the description, and if you use that, you'll also be supporting Money Nerd, so thank you.